Hello, and welcome to the Tales of Aeoth, Episode 1, Part 2. If you're just joining us or somehow forgot the majestic meeting of our player characters for the first time, you can always watch it here on the podcast playlist. If you like what you saw here, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, or comment about what you enjoyed. Now, on with the summary. Last time, our players finally met with one another at the capital station, after engaging in their separate adventures being escorted by Asteri to the Forbidden Court. But trouble arrived when a rogue Silvermoon group started taking a warehouse hostage. Our heroes now prepared to raid and apprehend the troublemakers and lift the lockdown that impeded their progress. Will they succeed in their endeavors? Find out right now! Whoever wants to go to the front, organize yourself here. Whoever wants to go through the back, organize yourself here, please. Reyna, what are your skills in? I, I can do a performance, and then just from the loot. Oh, you're a, you're a bard. Then, by all means. Okay, so, who's going first? Haka yep. tries to go in first, right? Yep, yep. I'm gonna be going I'm in first. Up for Perry. Perry. Roll a dexterity save. Dexterity save, alright. Three. Okay, so, as soon as you get over to the door, you just see bullets just flying through the wood. One of them actually manages to graze you. <laughs> you take four, five, six, six damage. Ah, oh, good thing I had all of that on me. Yep, you hear shouting from beyond the thing. is like, death to the Imperial dogs! So yeah, no, they didn't even know who you are. They just preemptively fired. So, you're calling me an Imperial dog? Is that well, a <laughs> well, then I guess we're a bit beyond words then. All right, so you want to start going in? Oh yeah, we're going in, baby. Okay. Kiara. Yeah, she just immediately takes out her shield, her tower shield, and it just, like, sort of right there. You know Montag from Rainbow Six Siege? I do not. She essentially has a shield that folds in, but when she deploys it, it just covers her full body. It sort of, like, just slides open. So while they're going in, that's your cue, Asteri and the others. Asteri, Sarado, and Amana. You see the dilapidated wall that Kiara was talking about? Would you guys like to break in now or wait? before because you already heard uh, gunshots what, what were we I supposed did. to have like a signal or something well i mean you heard gunshots so you yeah. probably um, know that Sauro, something is going Sauro down we'll take that as the signal and send ruben crashing to the wall okay ruben can roll a strength check the that other players team okay never mind that succeeds you guys go through yeah so ruben like a um, kool-aid man's his way through the door yeah and sourdough will immediately follow and just say lay down your arms and lift the lock down that's all we want Ruben sort of like blasts through, and these guys are surprised. So, Aseri, Amana, and Sarado, you get a surprise round. All right, cool. And then we'll and then we'll roll for initiative. So, starting with Aseri, what do you want to do? You have essentially three rogue silver moons over here, a bunch of silver moons over here. I like this map a lot. Yes, it's really cool. Do I still have manacles or anything? Because I came from on duty. Yes. Let's say you do. You have two pairs of manacles. Make sure to write right. that down. And what do you wish to do? I'm going to try to slap the manacles on the guy with the gun. Okay, roll, I guess a strength roll to grapple? Roll with advantage. Oh, thank God for advantage. 15. Yep, unfortunately that does not succeed. He takes his rifle and just sort of like blocks the chain connecting the manacles. It realizes what you're trying to do and it doesn't work. Would I get one on him? No. Okay, if that's the case. You have a bonus action and still your movement if you want to do it. Bonus action, I am going to activate my starry form. Okay, which starry form shall you do? I shall now become the archer. All right, you take the form of the archer. Amana, what do you wish to do? Let's see, I'm going to cast gun on this to, guy. I'm going to cast Smith of Wesson. All right, roll. I'm going to be dual wielding. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Right. So you get to fire. Oh yeah, that's right. You, because you're using dual wielding as a fighting style, you can attack twice. Also use the rate of fire of both weapons. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, roll for the first attack. All right. Oh, how many shots are you firing first? Just two at the or With the bell rod, okay. Roll to hit. That's a 17. Unfortunately, that does not hit. Would you like to attack again? Yeah. All right, what's your next attack? 15. Does not hit. He's a tough boy, and he's also behind cover, so. Uh. He's a big boy. So yeah, he's essentially just using cover. Would you like to move? Yeah, I would move closer to here. Okay. Sourdough and Ruben, you yep. are up. I am immediately going to move over to Amana and go, hey, need a boost? Uh, sure. What do you got? I'm going to cast Heroism on Amana. So you okay. get, you are immune to being frightened and you gain temporary HP equal to my spell casting mod, which is five. Okay. Five temp HP points at the start of each of your turn. Oh, okay. That's neat. 
Yeah, and that's up to a minute, so. All right, very good. Yep. Would and... Ruben like to do anything? Um, yes, I will use my bonus action to control Ruben, and he will clomp, clomp, clomp up to the guy that Amano was going for and try and take a swing at him with his club. Okay, go ahead. Fuck. <laughs> that's going to be a 12. Yep, that does not hit. Damn. Unfortunate. Uh, unfortunate, indeed. You can see that these guys are pretty beefy and big, so mm -hmm. these are probably going to be the hardest problem. Okay, and with that, we are going to roll for initiative. Roger, roger. Ooh. Uh... Damn. Oh, could be worse. I got a good roll, so we're gonna we're gonna nice. do well. <laughs> I like your confidence. <laughs> I mean, I'll survive the encounter probably. I mean, I hope we all survive the encounter because it's the first fucking encounter of this campaign. Yeah, that would be. I sure that'd hope be nice. Sourdough doesn't die in this prequel. <laughs> well, there goes my fucking plan out the window. Well, no more prequels anymore. Oh damn! You heard it, guys. George Lucas said to pack up and go home. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. So, Amana, you're up. What do you want to do? I was given the ability of no fear, right? Yes. You cannot be frightened. In that case, I'm like, wow, I feel great. I'm going to go up to this orc, and I'm going to take the butt of my bell rod and smack him. All right. Roll to hit. I guess. Yeah. He's a real broom handle, this man. Yeah, go ahead. Is that just strength? Yeah, that is a strength, and also, technically, you're proficient in this weapon, so add your proficiency bonus as well. All right. You shitting me. Ten. That does not hit. Damn. I fucking hate this. <laughs> no, okay, you do have two weapon, uh, two weapon fighting, so you could, uh, you could pistol whip him with the other. Yeah. Try and pistol whip with the other one. I, I guess I am dual wielding. Yep. Go ahead. Roll. Thank you. Jesus. Eighteen. It that hits. Roll for damage. So it is going to be a one d six plus your strength modifier. Okay. It's a seven. There we go. Would you like to do anything else? I'm gonna step a little bit back. Okay, Volin. It's your time to shine, baby. What okay. do you want to do? So I've been thinking about this. So with my orbitals out, I'm going to use my first action to set up Fang Homa. All right, Fang Homa. Here it Fang comes. Homa. Here it comes. And Zolan has a movement speed of 45, so I've counted out the spaces, and I can basically do this. I'm going to try to take them all on three at once, as Zolan's <laughs> just going to shout, ready to fight the king of the ring, and he is going to attack the orc. All right, roll, please. Okay, 11. Actually, you are facing behind him. He is technically flanked. So you may roll again with advantage. Well, let's hope I don't somehow roll worse. Mm -hmm. No, it's an 18. That hits. That hits. Yep, go ahead. Roll for damage. Okay, 14 damage. Okay, so he was cruising for a bruising, and you brought it to him. However, he's still up. Would you like to end your turn? Before ending my turn, I would like to use one of my orbitals to prep a parry. Okay, all righty. So I have Fang Homa prepped and my parry. And I just yelled out at the entire group to fight the King of the Ring and were charged in. All right. And that Don't you is... roll anything to try and get their attention or nah? You may roll Intimidation. Okay. 17. Okay. Uh, or roll. trying to convince them to fight me by all honesty. For the first group, they start to take on your offer as they turn to face you. Yes. However, you also invited these two to take aim at you, and they have guns. Yes. Will that be the end of your turn? Bonus action to gain resistance on bludgeon, slashing, and piercing by spending another orbital. Be spending two more psi points. Alrighty. It is now the big burly bruiser's turn. So, this one is immediately looking at you. You just challenge him. He's going to melee you. And that provokes your parries. Both of them. The parry with the soul knife is that... I just get a plus two to my AC. Okay. Perfectly for Fang Ho Ma. Fang Ho Ma! Let's go! Hey, what did he get? First one is a 10. Does a 10 hit? No. No, it doesn't. Fang Ho Ma. No. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, it's a 10. Fang Ho Ma hit and slap this son of a bitch. Okay, so I just roll damage? You just essentially punch him with a closed fist. Roll for damage, please. Just imagine it's like the bitch slap from Masters of Disguise. Okay. I love that move. Three. Okay. He takes three emotional damage from being pimp slapped by the King of the Ring. Yeah, this he just got stabbed. He tries to punch, and then I just bitch slap him. This wonderful, wonderful little boy is going to go over here. Do do. He's going to move right over here, and he is going to throw a steam grenade. The curse of Sauna. I curse you with Sauna. Whoa, Finland be upon ye. So with this one, steam. it is going, yeah, it's uh, it's essentially creating a steam sort of barrier, so it's hard to target anything. You will get a confirmed disadvantage on all of your hits when trying to target these with a ranged weapon. This big boy over here is going to punch Ruben. 
much fucking luck. Does I mean, it look like a rock'em sock'em robot. Does a six hit? Nope. Well, that's the end of their turn. Sourdo, it is now your turn. What are you going to do? All right. So Sourdo is going to, like, hang back because they got to still have concentration on Amana's heroism. So they're not going to get involved in combat quite yet. However, they defer their bonus action to Ruben, who is going to see this man, like, punch him in the gut and not do anything and immediately return on his own. That is going to be a 23. That hits. So that is going to be 10 points of force damage. Okay. Does he get knocked back as well? It does not specify. Just target you can see 1d8 plus pro phone force damage. Okay. It is now Kiara's turn. And she is going to essentially move over here, run right around over here, and assist Volan. I should probably let Kiara attack, shouldn't I? <laughs> that would be good. She doesn't need to. I can take And she doesn't really need to use her bonus action, so she is good. It is now Asteri, your turn. What do you want to do? Yay. Yay. Can I still see through this area? The the, you mean the smoke? Obviously this. Yeah. You can vaguely see things inside the smoke. You can't see anything past it. No, that's fine. Because I'm casting Fairy Fire right in the middle. Oh, okay. Every yeah, sure object within a 20-foot cube range is outlined in blue, green, or violet light. In my case, violet. Mm -hmm. They also oh, no. need to roll a dex save. Okay, I shall roll a dex save for all three of them. So you're targeting Fairy Fire in here? Yep. Okay, so first one. Does an eight succeed? Nope. No. Okay. Second one. God, I'm getting really fucking low rolls. Does an eight succeed? <laughs> no. I mean, okay. then again, I get low rolls in combat. Out of combat, I'm fine, as you can okay. see. Okay, now, here's the real kicker. You ready? Does a five succeed? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, yep, so they are, so uh, anyone who they all fail. Gets advantage because they now start glowing violet. Okay, awesome. Unfortunately, they're still in the smoke, so if you do a range attack, it will still be disadvantage. But once they're outside, or if the smoke is dissipated, then it will be advantage. Yes, they, sh they shed dim light in 10-foot radius. Ooh. I'm going to shoot my archer form. Okay. There we go, that's what I was expecting. Okay, what did you get? Total of 10 mm -hmm. to hit. Unfortunately, you do not. Yeah, that's what I figured. Mm-hmm. Now I'm done. Okay, so now it is the shooty shooty looters boys. So this guy is actually going to use his disengage action to move into the fog, the steam. This one is just going to shoot a barrage of fire at you. So he is using all of his bullets to do suppressing fire. Now, if you remember in XCOM, it's essentially suppressing fire in XCOM. So he's essentially just firing at you to pin you down. And if you move, he gets an opportunity attack. All right. This All right. one is going to try and shoot at Volin with confirmed disadvantage. By the way, do you want to mark all of them as uh, being... Oh, yeah, sure. Give me a sec. Purple, purple. Oh, no, they're all purple. Yeah, well, they're glowing purple, which, you know, still would rattle you. But you can't see them in the smoke. Also, you're facing away. Yeah, so this yeah. one is going to roll with confirmed disadvantage. Okay, yeah, I'm not even going to bother with the other one. It misses. Legendary Hero Haka, what do you want to do? Legendary mm -hmm. Hero Haka. All right, then. So, question. If I cast an area of effect spell, I could just plop it as I please right here? Yes. The threshold's going to go up by uh, three more because I'm not going to use my spell slot. They need to roll a 14 or higher. This is Shatter. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Constitution saving throw. Wouldn't they get affected as well? No. Nope. Is it a line? Nope. Oh, no. It's just a... Okay, cool. It's a, ra it's a radius over 60 feet, 10 foot radius. So in this is going to hit all of them. For the two of the shooty boys, 16 and a, okay, natural 20. Nice. Do both of those succeed? Those succeed in the last one? The last one was a natural 20, so I'm assuming that one succeeds. Yep, so that's all the target? No, I need to roll for the other two. Give me one moment. So these two is 14 and 3. So, yeah. There's one more. 7. Okay, yeah. This one only takes half damage. What's the damage? And he points his gun out as it shoots out. Grenade out! <laughs> and it explodes, creating a lot of noise. It is 18 damage. It's for those that have failed, and 9 damage for those that have succeeded. It has his eyes glow silver. One is out for the count. Very nice. Minus 9 damage. Thank you for doing the math for me. I am very bad at math. At basic math. Okay. I'm going to use my movement to reposition myself over here. Is there any bonus mm -hmm. actions that you would like to do? I believe that's currently everything I can do at the moment. That will be it. All right. Awesome. All right. So now it is the Blood Moon Thugs. And this one is going to try and attack Volan. Does a 16 hit you, Volan? Nope. So okay. Fang Homa. Fang Homa. Smack him. Five damage. All right. So Volan just bitch slaps this guy as well. Mm-hmm. 
This one is actually going to come to you, flank you, which will give him an advantage to attack. A critical, however, that activates Kiara's reactionary ability. So she activates her ability, Shield Maiden. If allies in a 15 foot radius take damage, Kiara will absorb that damage and gain resistance to that instance of damage. And this also goes into her second ability, Divine Protection. The first successful attack at Kiara's damage is ignored. However, any lingering effects will remain. This can only happen once per round. So now this guy is going to try and attack you. Does an 11 hit? Nope. So this guy is going to move over here, turn and shoot at Esteri. Esteri, you're in cover. So you get a plus two to your AC. Okay. And God, are you fucking kidding me? So a six, does a six hit? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, finally, to Rhina. Yep. It's your turn. What would you like to do? I'm going to cast Heat Metal on the ones that I can see that have weapons, which is probably like right here. Okay. Do I need to roll a save or how does that work? Heat Metal is choose a manufactured metal object. You can see within range, you cause object to grow hot. And then it says any creature in physical contact with the object takes 2d8 fire damage when you cast a spell. Oh, okay. Would you like to roll perception to see what these fine fellows are holding? Roll for perception, please. That's a five. You notice that these guys have swords and guns, so you can definitely target one of them. Okay. The, uh, the big guy also has a gun as well. He has it holstered in his back I'm gonna pocket. Target. I'm going to target the one with the, the big guy because he can do the most damage. Okay, so that just starts immediately heating up and it just does damage? Yeah, it gives about any creature physical project with the object takes 2d8 fire damage. Okay, would you like to use your bonus action to cause the damage again? You can just yeah. do the instance twice. Yeah. All right, roll the damage, please. That is... that's a nine. Yeah. All right, you see that the big guy is just like... Oh. Ah, 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 as he's like holding back pocket as like the holster is now melting and it's now going into like his pants. It's oh, touching dude. skin. <laughs> Would you like to use your bonus action to do it again? Uh, yes. Okay. Roll for damage, baby. That's a, wait, what? Yep. 13. <laughs> yeah. So this guy is like, ah, 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 ah. he's now in like a full blown panic. So he's not even ready. So Volan, if you try to attack him, you're going to get advantage. Oh, he's going to get attacked a lot. <laughs> he's going to get attacked a lot. Yeah. So, Reyna, you still have a move. So, would you like to move, perhaps? I'm going to go, like, right here. All right, cool. And that will be the end of your turn? Yep. Okay, back to the round. Um, Mana, it's your turn. Okay, so, does this guy have any weapons of any sort? Yes. Would you like to roll perception? Yes. Okay, roll for perception, please. Three. Okay, so you notice that he has iron knuckles. That's all you can tell, because he's holding them and using them to try and punch Ruben. Oh, that's not, that's not nice. No, it's not nice at all. I'm going to take my... um. You can disengage as an action. What do, you, what do you mean? If you don't want to be in melee range of this guy so that you have like a disadvantage with range attacks, you can take a disengage as an action and then move. Okay, yeah, I think I'll do that. All right, where do you move? I'll go right here. Okay, that actually activates a reaction. He sees you moving, and he's going to move up with you. Uh, no, no. Ruben provokes a opportunity attack, Sourdough, if you would like Ruben uh, to Roger, Roger. punch him in the face. Yep, this is a real domino effect right here. That's a crit fail. <laughs> okay, Ruben just, Ruben just tries to, like, club him, but he just misses an entire torso, just starts, like, spinning like a top. <laughs> he just immediately follows up to you, Humana. I want to use Hail of Thorns. You can use Hail of yeah. Thorns as a bonus action. Would you like to attack? Yeah. So in order to use Hail of Thorns, you will have to roll with disadvantage. Are you okay with that? Sure. All right. How much ammo are you using? I'll use two shots. All right. So make sure that you got that on there and roll to hit with disadvantage. It's an aid. That does not hit. Would you like to attack with your other weapon with disadvantage? Yeah. Or would you like to try and like melee him? Yeah, I'll just melee him. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. That's a 22. That hits. Roll for damage, please. Six. Six damage. Okay. Right. I totally forgot about Hail of Thorns. What's your spell, DC? I shall roll for Dexterity. You know what? Don't even bother. He rolled a fucking one. Roll. It's like, God, are you fucking kidding me? Everybody's just missing their shots. <laughs> you punched the purple guy, Volan. That's why I punched him first. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, I got, Fair enough. So I got nine. Okay, nine Thorns damage. Hail of Thorns. Volan, can you put an inspiration point on your uh, character sheet, please? <laughs> just for that. Yeah, you're not the only one missing everything today. <laughs> the only thing. <laughs> true, true. Okay, so is that all you would like to do, uh, Manna? Uh, yeah, it doesn't bonus, so all I can do. Okay, so we now go to Vulan. 
Well then, okay. it's your turn. What do you want to do? So, I want to ask a question. Can I take my short sword and try to swing wide and hit all three? You or can, hit? but I will say that will be with disadvantage. Except for the purple guy who's... Like, oh yeah, that he's... Uh, so that would just be a normal roll for the purple guy. So just roll three. That. Two with disadvantage, one normal. Okay. Purple guy! Okay, so purple guy, there's a 15. <laughs> okay, that does 15. not hit. Okay, the guy right next to Volin. Mm -hmm. 11. Okay, that hits. 28 for that last guy near Kira. That hits. Roll for damage, please. So, 8 for the first one. Okay. And what for the next one? 15 for the second one near Kiara. Okay, yep, five. he's down. That's it, yes. he's up. Swing. Okay, I am now going to use my bonus action to prep a Fanghoma, and I'm going to use my orbital to prep a parry, and then I'm going to walk this way to step out of Purple Guy's range to provoke an attack of opportunity. Yep, go for it. Okay, no, he takes a swing on me, and if he misses, I fang homa him on my way out. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Okay, yep, I shall roll for purple guy. Does a 22 hit? That equals out my AC, but if you want, I can cast shield real quick. No, we'll say that because it is... Aren't you already using the reaction to do the... No, here's the thing. Kiara is going to take the damage for you. And since it's the start of the round, she doesn't take any damage. Anyway, is that it? Yep, nope, that's it. You're lucky Kiara is supporting you right now. I mean, I had a lot of defensive stuff. I would have only taken two hits. Maybe. We will see about that. It is now the big burly boy's turn, and he's actually going to move up and turn over to Kiara and swing at her. He Not misses. Yeah, he misses. So, Akka, and let's see, anybody else? Yeah. Since this missed, this activates one of her abilities, Rejuvenating Grace. And so, since that enemy missed, all allies gain 1d4 plus 1 health back. This probably only applies to you, Haka. So yeah, you get yep. two health back. Yippee. I get one health back. <laughs> Yippee. Hey, at least nobody's like getting nobody's getting Shrek. So that's a that's the no, sign of a no good encounter. No one's getting wrecked. This is pretty good. Yep. Okay. So this guy is going to move out over to here and aim at Ruben and is going to fire his hole puncher. Mm -hmm. So that's just going to be a normal attack. So that is a nine. Yeah, that does not hit. Great. Not hit. He's officially out of ammo. Good for him. <laughs> great, great, great for him. This guy is going to try and swing at Amana. He is going to attack. So does a, does a 16 hit Amana? It is not. Okay. Well, he misses that attack. Oh, no, he gets to make two melee attacks. Okay. How about a 24? Uh, no, totally. Yeah. It doesn't hit me. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to roll for damage now. Put that temp HP to use. Yeah. So he is going to punch your face. So six damage. All right. That's not bad. Uh, so the first you one. only take one damage because of the temporary HP. Yep. Does, no, is that no, how that works? Five. Yeah, the temporary HP is used up before the main yeah. HP. Oh, okay. So you are back to 25. However, mm. this activates an ability that he is able to make another melee attack against you since the first landing was successful. He rolled a goddamn natural one. Fuck my life. Good, Good job. Him. He misses and swings. You just duck and dive and he shows his ass to you because he's a fucking idiot. You fucking loser. Anyway, so that will be all of them. Sourdough, it is now your turn. Yep. What would you like um, to do? I am going to move up to here just so I can like keep having a good view on the battlefield. Rupert is going to see this orc attacking Sourdough's new best friend, Amana, and also completely whiff and leaving Zaps in the open. So clunk, 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 clunk. Rupert's yep. going to go make an attack. Roll right. with advantage, please. Roger, roger. That is going to be a 19. That hits. Roll for damage. Yep. Roger, roger. That is going to be seven points of force damage. He is very low. Is there anything else you would like to do? I'm going to, like, see that my boy's doing good work, and I'm going to draw the pistol from my holster I just already have in my offhand, and I'm going to take a shot at the guy with my pistol. Since his ass is open to you, roll with advantage. Oh, that's an at 20. I don't need to roll again. Okay, <laughs> roll with a full dice. Um, all right, double dice. Yeah, double dice, baby. Roger, roger. I should probably Maybe actually get the real the, dice. Uh, purple guys are really tanky. Yes, Sorry, yes, they are. That's that. kind That's kind of the point. <laughs> that's going to be... Stupid. You're that's really lucky I've been rolling low. So you just shoot him, and, and like, Amana's, like, bracing for another attack, and you, you just hear it, uh, and then just falls over. And a gunshot. I, I look over at Amana and give her a thumbs up. I look back to Ruben and give, her, give him a thumbs up. Nice. He gives you two thumbs up, because he's got four hands. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I love Double it. the thumbs! Will that be the end of your turn, Sourdough? Yep. Okay. Sure. Going to Kiara. Kiara's done with this bullshit. <laughs> She's just gonna shield bash a motherfucker. Okay, so 
Yeah, no, that hits. I'm not even going to roll for damage. That will definitely be enough. She just hits, fully smacks this guy in the face, so much so that it cracks his mask with a tower shield and he just collapses over. She is also going to move over here and look over there, and that will be her turn. Asteri, it's your turn. Yay. Yay. What do you want to do? Okay, I'm just going to, sh- mm-hmm. at this point, just you with this guy. Roll, please. Advantage. 19. Okay, so yeah, that hits. Roll for damage, please. I, that, I'm using my uh, Star Bolt. Archer star Bolt. bolt. Alright, what does it do? Eight! Woo! Is it yet? Because I haven't hit anything! <laughs> so, 11 damage. Very good, very good. What would you like to do as your action? As my action, since I casted a cantrip, I can still cast a leveled spell, but I'm gonna use one of my abilities. Mm hmm, mm hmm. And cast Guiding Bolt at this one. Okay. Do I have to roll to hit? or No, I rolled to hit. Okay, go ahead. 19 to hit. That hits. Oh, thank God. All right, so he takes... You're just one above, pal, because he was in cover. I know. All right, go ahead. 18. If he's still conscious, he technically is now a mystical dim light glowing, so the next person to attack him gets advantage. Okay, he has another so... light. Bing! You're literally lighting people up. Basically, and stepping back. Okay. For cover. Is that the end of your turn, good sir? Yes. Okay. So it is the lizard shooty 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 boys. This guy is going to go back and he is going to spend an action to reload his bullet. Reload! And he is also going to use bonus action for something, but you can't see what it is. So this guy is going to move back and try and shoot at Ruben, but he gets a disadvantage because he's shooting through the smoke. He got a natural one. You know what? His gun jams. That's what, you, that's what you get for getting a natural one, you piece of shit. This guy is going to shoot at Vullen, but with a confirmed disadvantage, even though your back is turned. A two! <laughs> Can Vullen just smack the bullet back at his face? No! <laughs> They're not a monk. Yeah. Not, yet. Yeah, not yet. He wastes a shot, and that's it. <laughs> I, I, I am curious, how does this guy look after taking 18 uh, damage to the face? Because I know this guy only had 11. He, he looks absolutely like... Bubbernucked. He he looked like he just got shot with an archer made of starlight. Yay. Yay! That'll be his turn. Haka, it is now your turn. What would you like to do? Alright then, so going to move myself over here. Mm-hmm. Look, that's five feet. That direction. Double check. That's within range. It's using one of my spell slots. It's making this into a bonus action by using the threshold. It increases by three. Got one threshold left. This is bonus action shatter. They all have to roll 14 or higher constitution save. Okay, so rolling for this one first. That one fails. One of them succeeds, sorry. This one succeeds, the other one fails. Oh, uh, and also that guy too? Yep, it's the big, 10 foot The big boy? Is. Okay, the big boy. All right, I shall roll for big boy. Yeah, he also succeeds. Please roll for damage, sir. All right then, grenade out. What? Boom. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so that's a 13 for those that failed, and that would be a 6 for those that succeed. Okay, so this one is down. This guy is barely alive, and it was a 6, right? Okay, there we are. So is that going to be the end of your turn? That was the bonus action, and now we're going to do something special. And now for something completely special. (laughs) Absurd! (laughs) Oh no, here we go. Just yeah. for ruining the Silver Moon name. Here's what's going to happen here. So this first shot is going to be with advantage. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's currently Bellrod right now. I got Ranger Gloves, so we're going to see that right now. That's a nat 20. Okay. <laughs> Roll that four way. double damage. Uh, and with Upsurge, it adds the damage. Yes, <laughs> indeed it does. Guns, correct? Yes, it does. Oh, baby. We were cooking with fire today. Hell yeah. So it's going to be looking like this. And that's going to be an eight. Okay. And we're going to go for that second shot because Upsurge is great like that. Mm hmm. And ten. No, that does not hit. How much damage did you do? I did eight damage. Yep, that's enough. He's down for the count. Okay, so that is one guy down. Sourdough's gonna shout from on the other side of the warehouse, like hiding behind the shelf. Y'all ready to give up yet? Fuck you, Imperial scum! Oh, it's like, I'm not, but I'm not Imperial. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Th- that, they don't know that. So this guy is now going to attack. Gets advantage because it's behind you. 
Okay, yeah, he actually hits finally some fucking good rolls. <laughs> finally some fucking good food. Yeah, exactly. 12 damage. Really? Yep, uh -huh. Amana, you take 12 damage. He essentially backstabbed you. Rude. Very rude. Spy from Team Fortress 2. Is Rain still here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm gonna cast Vicious Mockery on that guy over there. And I'm gonna say, purple's not your color. Wisdom save? Yeah. Uh, it's a natural 13. one. <laughs> How much damage? 1d4 and disadvantage on the next attack roll. Okay, he got four. He's so discouraged. Look at him. <laughs> Look how discouraged he is. Look at him. Look how discouraged you made him. <laughs> you uh, did this. You did this. You. You did this. You. So, is that going to be the end of Reyna's turn? No, I'm actually going to put Bardic Inspiration on Amana really quick. Yeah. Yay! I think. So, Amana, it is now your turn. I turn around to this little pipsqueak over here. Well, I'm gonna take ship out, squeak. I'm gonna take out both my axes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna attack them with them. Okay, so you turn around. Would you like to add your bardic inspiration die to that roll? I suppose so. Roll your first attack roll and add your bardic inspiration dice. Right. A fifteen. Okay, so you have an additional plus six to hit, which yeah, you hit, and then roll the other one. On that one. Okay. Well, one misses. Roll for damage for the first one, please. All right. Two. I'm not doing great this session. That's yeah, it's okay. It. All right. It I mean, it really Yeah, I mean, if it makes you feel better, I did great for the non-critical stuff. <laughs> you really should have saved that tw those twenties, huh? For the first swing, you thwack him with the axe. He ducks, it misses, and it slips, and it just falls over and hits the wood on the left-hand side. So you're missing one hand axe right now. No. Is there anything else you'd you like to do? Can I have a bonus action to take my axe back? Sure. Why not? Okay. There you go. So, it is now Vulen's turn. Mr. Vulen, what would you like to do? Okay, Vulen turns around, sees the smoke. I'm going to use a bonus action to activate my new magical equipment, Ooh. so three more orbitals. Mm -hmm. A total of six points, so two out of eight. Okay, so you have Either two way. remaining. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Either way, the threshold is eight, and I've used six points. Okay, so gotcha. I'm going to activate Harry and Fang Hamas. Fang Hamas. Fang Hamas. And you get advantage up. when you attack him. Roll with advantage, please. That hits. Please roll for damage. And my new you... magical devices, it says that I can consume one orbital for extra dice of damage done by of any dice of any attack. You may do that. Would you like to do that? Yep, so I'm going to okay. add in another E8. All right. Five, so 15 altogether. Okay, and he is down. Is that all of them? Almost all of them. There is Almost. two. There's two okay, actually three. Then. So Volan attacked that guy, and he's going to continue his movement to just walk right up to this feller and... Look at him. Look at yeah, him. No, he's literally just going to make eye contact. You just see this lizard folk, like, battered and bruised, and you have no idea what to do. He just, like, bang homas and the open palm just, like, come at me, bro. All of the big boys are down for the count, so we should remove that. Will that be the All end right. of your turn? Yes, that will be the end of my turn. All right, sourdough. Yep. All right, so I am going to see that Amana is starting to take a lot of damage on that side. So I am going to drop my heroism, but I am going to run over to her and immediately lay my hands on her back and cast Cure Wounds. Oh, So you right. will gain seven points of health back, Amana. All right, that's pretty good. Good job. Yep. And then as I do this, because I am like putting myself out into the open and Amana's getting bullied by this little rat kid here. Um, hey, I'm going to use you. my bonus action to bring Ruben over and Ruben's going to get- That's flanked. Over. Advantage. Roll with advantage. Roger, roger. That is 23 is my highest. Nice. That hits. Plus. Yep. Yeah, and that will be um, 10 points of force damage. Okay, he is hurting real bad. Ruben's turn goes after mine, so I'm done. Okay, Kiara's turn. Kiara's actually going to do a dash right over to here, and that will be the end of her turn. Asteri, what do you want to do? Ooh, ooh. Eh. Before you do anything, I will say this. Since there's, like, very fewer of them and more of you, you can try and force them to surrender if you roll an intimidation, but that will use your action to do so. I see. Would you like to do that? No, because the okay. area is not good at that. That goes for everybody else on their turn, by the way. I tried already. <laughs> well, I mean, you did that before when there was a lot of them. The stereo doesn't work with the people so much. Usually, uh... Yeah, fair enough. Anyway, go ahead. This is his head more than his mouth. Ooh. Anyway, pew pew. Thank God for advantage. I this rolled a two guy. and then a three, so that's a miss. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to shoot Guiding Bolt again then. Since you have inspiration, do you want to use that inspiration to reroll? Might as well. Okay, roll it to reroll. Well, it's better. 14. 
That does not hit, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, it happens. Oh. Uh, so that was my bonus action, star shot. Star shot. Actually, I'll let you use your inspiration to use it on this if you. Uh... Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna use it to then now do guiding bolt on this guy. Okay, using cool. my special ability. That is flanked. Roll with advantage. Twenty-one. That hits. All right, four d six. Roll. All right, so total of sixteen damage. Sixteen and damage. He's now glowing. He's more than glowing. He is collapsing on the floor. Oh, lovely. Also, the glow of this guy stops. Okay, nice. Is my turn now ends. All right, awesome. Both these guys turn, and he is going to disengage and move over here. So this guy over here, he just panics and tries to pistol whip you, and he does that with disadvantage. He got a a one. All right, Volin, you know what to do. Bang homa. Bang homa, baby. What's the damage? Actually, you know what? Don't even roll for the damage. He's down. Four. Yeah, don't bother. <laughs> He's down. Tries to pistol whip, Volan just uses the blade to parry and just bitch slaps him across the face. Yeah. Stop, he's already dead. I, I love yeah. how Volan's down the mouth most people and all he's doing is punching people. That's his thing. Yep. He's bitch slapping them. Again, the most I did is basically make people have advantage. I have done almost nothing else. Oh, also, this smoke has definitely dissipated by now. So, Haka. What ends up happening, because it says right here, because I'm at my limit, my threshold, and upsurge is active, upsurge ends, and the target must spend their entire turn to recover. Okay, you're spending your entire turn to recover? It is quite literally the only thing I can do. Haka leaves upsurge state, since he hasn't done this in a quite a long while, and you see steam come off his bite. Well, it wouldn't be steam, it would be this energy. <sighs> Not old. <clears throat> and that's all I can do. So it is now Rhina's turn. I am going to try to get this guy to surrender. So I'm going to roll for intimidation. And Rhina's going to say, please surrender. You're completely surrounded. Roll with disadvantage, please. <laughs> 14. That does not convince him. So Amana, do you just want to shoot this fool? I do. I okay. Do. You might want <laughs> to move somewhere over here-ish. So, you know, you don't get disadvantage. Where there are less bodies. Yes, that too. Just... Bodies at the floor. Yep. Bop. All right. Do I need to roll? Yes, roll, please. All right. 19. That hits. Nice. Roll four damage, please. Five and six. Okay. You do the kill shot. Anything cool you would like to say before shooting him? You give the Silver Moons a bad name. Bang. I didn't even know what the Silver Moons wanted before I got here. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and with that, combat is over. You are right. victorious. Yeah. You did it. We Sarto killed. is immediately going to, like, trace over Gordon Mata and go, Are you okay? You good? <sighs> I finally got a shot in. Hey, are there any more? You look around, there does not appear to be any more. <sighs> Yara just sort, sort of goes to you and, like, extends the hand. Need a boost up, old timer? Yeah, I appreciate that. Didn't expect to use upsurge to train myself. Can you teach me that? Oh, that's... across the room. <laughs> Can you teach me that? <laughs> yep. Do you guys want to loot the bodies? I, um, I do. Yes. Sourdough yeah. doesn't want to loot the bodies, but Sourdough sees a table full of guns and they're immediately interested. Volen goes around to each of the people that he fought in this battle, not necessarily defeated, and he's going to start sketching their face. Oh and my if God. anyone looks over, he's making up names for him. Okay. <laughs> like the glowy guy that he just knocked out was the glowing bastard. As a note, I'm going to transform from the archer into the dragon and then, you know, start going through not their belongings, but, you know, ID and anything else. Okay. Asteri doesn't care so much about the items, more about, you know, actual police work. You'll make logs and all of that stuff. Enforcers start to pour in and apprehend the rogue Silvermoon vagrants. You take account of all of the spare masks for an additional 50 more to add to your inventory. All of them brandishing the red lines under the eye holes. I thought they were just rumors, but I guess this confirms it, Kiara says, holding the mask. I heard a Silvermoon tribe was festering animosity towards the Emperor, wanting to dismantle the whole Empire. They called themselves Blood Moons for their unnecessary aggression towards civilian casualties. They strayed from your path, Haka. Indeed they have. We need to warn the Emperor about this. Indeed we do. So, she turns to the party, handing back the Blood Moon mask. Kiara asks if she could join the conversation to speak to the Emperor personally about this. Absolutely. I'm gonna put on one of the masks, but upside down. It would be an honor to accompany the legendary hero to meet Sha'anshah Shah Sayusta. The enforcers also start pouring in, and they see Ruben holding, like, all of the guns. They ask nicely, since that's technically evidence, they would like that. Oh, uh, okay. Oh. Ruben, hand him over. 
you hand all over the guns, but the bodies that you do loot, you can hand them over, or you can say not to, because you didn't... No, they didn't if, if Sardo gets any evidence, he'll give it to them. Okay. Sardo will make sure they get the evidence. It's his job. All right. They don't need the broken Silver Moon masks, so they'll... Or, or all of them, so they'll just give those to you. With that, the quarantine is lifted, and you guys are able to go to the First Ring District. All right. Shall we? Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. You guys take the junction over here, all the way up over here. <laughs> so you guys are now over at the Forbidden Court. So the First Ring District, otherwise known as the Royal Palace District, was a place for the upper echelon of the Empire. The Empyrean upper crust, such as lawmakers, higher nobles, supreme adjudicators, ambassadors, and foreign envoys from other nations, influenced the Empire and stayed in luxurious mansions filled with gold and jade. The Royal District was separated into two parts, a larger outer court, where everyone in the First District resides, and an inner court, called the Forbidden Court. The Forbidden Court is where the Emperor and Empress reside. This palace is not available for the public to enter, thus being forbidden to the general public. But with your invitations, the court guards allow you within the inner court, escorting you to the lavish chambers of the royal gardens and into the royal throne room. The chambers are empty, except for an old elf wearing formal robes who seems to be waiting to greet you. Asteri, from what you know, this is the Emperor Vizier, known simply as Vamir the Empyrean advisor to the Emperor for the last ten years. So he just turns to you. Asteri, who are these people that you dragged along with? You know that commoners are forbidden in the inner court. Normally, yes, except these are not commoners. Hold up mm. one of the invitations he probably grabbed. They have been royally invited mm. in this regard. He says more dismissively, not even recognizing that one of the legendary heroes was amongst the group. How would you like to introduce yourselves? All of us? Yes, all of you. Fallen is going to walk first, look at the vizier, and just extend his hand and go, Hey, Fallen Kyrat, pleasure to meet you. Mm -hmm. Charmed. Really? I think they make an ointment for that down in the third ring. <laughs> he just ignores you. He just ignores you and is like, and he doesn't even notice you, Haka. Haka Silvermoon, as I take a bow, here to see my old friend. A legendary hero, is that you? Remembering your face is challenging since you never show it in the inner court, always absent and never responding to my invitations. Uh, oh, those were yours. Yes, those were mine, and I written them by myself, and you didn't respond to a single one. Now you know why he doesn't quote-unquote recognize you, because he's a petty bitch. <laughs> by the way, Nasari says that's rude to Haka. <laughs> Boo. Handwritten letters are a rarity nowadays. Yes, and also very time-consuming. I do apologize. He just sort of glibly brushes you aside. Asari, why have you arrived so late? Yes, the <laughs> orbital stations were closed due to a uh, riot happening in the Third Ring. A riot? In the Third Ring? What has happened? Indeed. You will have my report on it after this meeting is over. Fallen just shows the mask. Ah, yes. Rogue Silvermoons, eh? Indeed. Well, who would have guessed that an unorganized mess would congeal into empty imperial scum? Sort of mumbles behind his breath, but Haka and the other people, you can hear that. It's like, why he would let these silver moons fester is beyond me. Sourdough is going to jauntily, like, come up to this guy and let his hand. It's like, <laughs> hi, my name's Sourdough, a friend of mine. Ali and I wrote a dissertation on um, ancient magic we found out in the Arid Fracture. Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. I... I think I do recall that. The Empress was actually quite pleased with your work. Oh, really? Yes. In fact, she was the one who recommended that you would be invited here. Ooh, I can't wait to meet mm. her then. Mm. Uh, That's a I, I... <laughs> yeah, yes, this must be the Zakari daughter. Oh, you actually know my name. That's quite surprising. I've read the reports I know of you. I do not know you personally. Your father has been doing very good work in the Okurish March Nations. Yeah, he certainly knows makes a name for himself. Yes, I believe there was talks between the Emperor and I, but I believe that he is overdue for a Medal of Valor. Mm. Well, I guess I'll see you when I, you, you put that on him. Hopefully the legendary hero would be able to attend this one. Yes, of course. I'll put you up to that. So, Asteri, I believe that they are here for the royal invitation by the Emperor? Indeed. I've confirmed all invitations. I see. Well, unfortunately, the Emperor is away on a emergency diplomatic mission off in a foreign land. 
She will return in three days or so. Unfortunately, we must postpone this appointment until then. Guards, would you please escort them away? Royal Vizier. Rejecting hospitality to our guests is rude, especially when some have traveled so far and why. Out of the corner of your eye, flowing silk from an elegant dress follows down the stairs as she approaches you, adorned in jewelry hanging from her neck, wrists, and jade crown. The beautiful bird folk you know as the Empress, Shabanu Kasana. But to Asterian Haka, you know her simply as Illith. <laughs> Proper imperial bow. I'm going to see you guys do it, and Sourdough is immediately going to drop into like a very clumsy bow along with Ruben. Mm -hmm. I do a bow as well. Do you guys all bow? Yep. I will, I, I will bow, but mine will also open with Illish in its menages. She sort of smiles as it's like, you may rise. She goes over and gives you a hug, Haka, with a bright smile on her face. It's like, it is so good to see you again, my good friend. It is so good to see you. So much has changed. Yes, it's been a long 10 years, but I remember your face just as well as when you first stepped into the Forbidden Court. She immediately turns to the Vizier and is like, The Emperor has invited them here, so they may stay in the Forbidden Court. He told me you are to prepare the guest rooms for Haka, Asteri, and their guests if Shansha Shayur Sam is absent. She instructed Vimir. The Vizier, like, sort of turns and is like, And how come I wasn't informed of this contingency? He said in protest, looks at you guys and releases a small sigh and is like, it will be done, my empress. He says with a bow as he begins to ready the rooms as per her request. Um, following the advice from earlier, Sourdough is going to like quietly sling off his backpack and start looking around for a gift he can give the empress. Mm -hmm. You may stay here as long as you like or until the emperor arrives. So please feel free to stay within the Forbidden Court until the emperor has returned. Owen's going to raise his hand to ask a question. Yes, what is your question? Is there a training hall that I can use here for the next three days? Well, my husband would usually use the courtyard to train and spar, so, you know, the, usually the garden and the fountain provides a nice, soothing aura of calmness, so you may do that if you wish. All the facilities are available to you. Illith, I must ask, why did the Empress Amunna specifically? Well, I mean, he is my husband, and I do not want to step intrude on him, so he would he would like to tell you in person. Of course. All I can say is, with my help, he has hand-selected you all on an important assignment, one that he would want to tell you personally, and to be as discreet as possible. That'll be done. For now, you are guests, and may explore the Empire at your leisure. Though, uh, Haka, Kiara, though, if I may ask, I am concerned about these rogue silver moons in the Third Ring District, the Blood Moons, as they are called. Can you investigate and deal with the root of this problem? The Empire would be ever so grateful. It shall be done. For the Empire, for its people, and for you, my friend, of course. Yep. So, Sarado, as you're searching through, do you remember the really shiny hunk of glass that you picked up? Yeah, of course. That's probably the only close thing to anything remotely shiny that you have. All right. I was going to either offer that or like an old hunting trap in my bag. Yeah, I don't think she'll go for right. that. I'll pull out both. Why not? <laughs> I just look up at her. I'm like, I haven't had a lot of time to prepare, but I said I was to offer you a gift. And I hold her like the hunting trap and like the shiny piece of glass in both my hands and like sort of like bounce her a little bit. <laughs> she sort of looks like a little bit confused, taken aback. And she sort of looks at Haka. His first time in the Empire, you wanted to make a first good impression. He's a good boy. Ah, I see. We sought to seek an audience with you, so the gifts are not necessary, but uh, appreciated. And she sort of like, you know, puts her hands down to scoop each each one. We will cherish this greatly. Thank you. Sourdough looks up and he like smiles and gives her a nod. Mm -hmm. You may rise now. She's going to put it on the fridge so everyone can see it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if you need anything, please ask Vimir, and he will provide it to you as soon as possible. Although, <laughs> how upset is he for oh, my lack of not arriving? <laughs> Very. Illith, <laughs> she sort of like puts a hand and is like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't take it personally. And then she immediately goes to Asteri, he takes it personally. He takes it personally a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, he looks so bitter. <laughs> Asteri, to you, he usually looks like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a very grumpy old elf. Um, Miss Arena, you said that perhaps had an assignment for me. I'm the artifice you sent for, Sourdough. 
Yes, well, for you, the new magical device that you have acquired, it would be a very interesting curio if you put it into our Empyrean library for further research. Of course, just point me in the right direction and I'll log it right away. Yes, if you ask the vizier, he will gladly give you directions to our Empyrean library. All right. I'm going to look at the vizier and immediately flash him a smile. He just grumbles as he's providing the pillows and blankets for the guest rooms. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of Sideshow Bob from Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then with that, she leaves with a smile, leaving you to do as you please in the Forbidden Court. And that is where we're going to end it. All right. Very good. A very good session. Very good session, everybody. Hi there, Yektan here. Thanks for watching this episode of the Tales of Aoth D&D Tabletop Campaign. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. If you want to see more, click on the playlist linked here. Take care, and see you in the next video!